Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. This is How to Invest, Spencer here, and this one's going to be a new video on uh, a company that one of my use, uh, viewers actually brought up. They left a comment in one of the past videos uh, asking if I could do it in video on Green Lane Holdings, ticker symbol GNLN. Uh, this is a operator within the um, smoke shop space and they're a wholesaler. So they wholesale to almost every smoke shop or major smoke shop in the United States and are looking to go uh, global. This is their home website. So it's GreenLane, uh, GNLN.com. Um, and if we click on the home, this is the first thing that pops up. Uh, this is one of their brands that they own, Vibes, Vibes Paper, um, just a, another rolling paper to compete with all the numerous ones that are already available. Um, but to get a good idea of what this company does, um, we'll just go through their website and really see what they're describing that they do. Um, so five global distri distribution hubs, 15 years of experience. So this company has been around for a little bit. Um, they haven't been as public as long, but they do have great experience. Um, 50 partners with the brands, as we'll go over um, in just a bit, and over 10 million uh, users reach. So they're able to reach over 10 million customers. Um, it goes down, they just have award-winning e-commerce. Um, they're really trying to focus on this part of their brand and focusing on direct to consumer, which is very common for lots of brands currently due to direct consumer having much higher margins than trying to sell to a middleman who then will sell to a customer. Um, typically, if you're selling directly to the customer, you'll be able to make more money. Um, and it's just that simple. Uh, if we go down, it's leading edge and child resistant packaging, which is very important not only for uh, dispensaries, but also individuals with children. They obviously don't want their kids getting into um, any of the cannabis or cannabis related items. Um, they have house brands, so they do own uh, a good amount of companies, like I said earlier. Vibes was one of their uh, major ones of the paper brand. If we scroll down, they have industry best wholesaling, uh, comprehensive catalog, accessories, um, basically anything that relates to smoking, they have or will sell to you. Um, but I want to go over to the brands to try and show you guys what they do sell and what they supply with whole sh uh, with head shops. So a head shop is anything really if you go in and um, it's basically a, a shop for smokers. Um, and they basically supply everything in a head shop um, that has to do with smoking. So these are the brands that they own, um, High Sci or High Science, uh, the Vibes brand for the papers, uh, Keith Herring, which is very, very popular nowadays, uh, not only in the glass industry, but basically everywhere you go, you see Keith Herring stuff. Um, it's on a lot of clothing. Um, he was just a very popular artist back in the day. And has very very colorful um, usually stick figures um, I'm not I guess this would be ice e ice I'm not really sure how to say this one I've never seen this brand anywhere um, they also have Marley natural which has a lion I've never heard of that one either um, aerospaced I've never heard of and groove I have also never heard of but if you scroll down to the brands they do distribute and wholesale I would almost guarantee that most of you guys know a good amount of these. Um, and a lot, some of these don't even have anything to do with science. Like they, they distribute Bic, um, which is a pen brand, or even razors. Um, so interesting there. Pax is a vaporizer. A Juul is an e-cig. This is a torch company. Um, Candy Pens is very popular on social media platforms. Santa Cruz Shredders are the best in the game. Uh, but it looks like you guys get the deal. They have an amazing amount of brands that they're able to distribute and uh, connections and relationships with these brands. Um, so that is really their business model. They um, have these relationships with these brands and also their own brand that they own and they either sell it directly to their customers or they ship it out for discounts uh, to head shops because they buy in bulk. Um, but to really get into what I think about this stock, uh, typically we do like to start with the market capitalization on this channel. And if we look at the market cap, uh, it's very, very, very small. 
for any company that I would invest in or even even any cannabis company that I would invest in. This is very, very small. This would be considered a micro cap stock. Um, it's only $118 million. So theoretically, you could buy this whole company if they agreed to it for basically $120 million. You'd, you'd get everything. Um, the stock was on a very, very down downward day today, down almost 10%, um, all the way back down to 1.56, so $1.56. Uh, but I wouldn't really be too concerned about this daily move or even the move that we've been on in the past month. If we look at the monthly chart, uh, just even, I guess, since October, we've been down substantially. If we look at the sixth month, we've been down, down tremendously, and it's just been a, a really rough ride for this stock. Um, but, um, like I said, I wouldn't be too concerned about this downward move. Um, I think that the stock did get uh, a little too ahead of its time, um, just based off the amount of money that they're making currently, um, just cause they, they don't make that much money and they were very, very richly valued previously. Um, if we look at the full chart, we can see that when they first, uh, became public and went on the market, they were a huge stock compared to where they are today. So they went public at $29, um, which is very, very, very high. Well, that was um, the high of the day. They came public at, yeah, 29, um, and have fallen all the way down to $1.56. Uh, the stock chart is very, very ugly from a technical perspective. Um, we can see here just a very, very good downward trend and another downward trend starting back in, it looks like February, it peaked again. We did have a good amount of euphoria in the general overall market. Um, even with a lot of the cannabis stocks, there was a, an extreme amount of euphoria. Um, if we look over to Aurora Cannabis, we go to uh, um, February here, the stock over doubled, or looks like it tripled. It went from $4 all the way up to 18, so over a 4X in a very, very short period of time. Um, just due to uh, a lot of buying pressure in the overall indices. And like I said, there was just crazy euphoria and momentum in uh, the cannabis sector. Um, I think a lot of people were thinking as Biden was elected that they would uh, federally legalize or federally decriminalize cannabis and it would be very bullish for all the companies. Um, but that has yet to happen and uh, there is no real talks of it. Um, so we have been... Uh, just consolidating for a long period of time, almost the longest period of time um, that this chart has. This is Aurora Cannabis, which is a very popular player in the field, and just uh, one way that a lot of people like to play the cannabis industry. Um, but we can see here, this has been the longest consolidation period um, in this stock chart's history. So this was the second longest uh, all the way back in 2016. It went from 19 um, all the way to 27, range in over a year and a half, um, which is a very long period of time. Well, looks like, um, yeah, about a year and a half, almost two years. Um, but the stock typically likes to move a lot and it typically does have a lot of volatility. Um, so it does seem weird for not only this stock, but the entire industry. If we look over at Sundog Growers, they have a very, very similar chart to GL um, or GNN. GNLN, it's a very hard ticker to say, sorry. Um, but their, their chart is almost exactly the same. This is another um, very speculative option in the cannabis field, uh, which is what I would consider GNLN. Um, they both have very, very small market caps. They both opened at a very high price and have been straight down since then and have been consolidating for a very good period of time. Um, what my kind of thoughts were that for this stock at overall was that um, it is intriguing in the sense that they do have a, a good amount of partnerships and relationships with these brands. And I think that head shops probably will, um, I would exponentially increase over time as federal legalization does occur and more and more states become, I mean, decriminalized or even medical for uh, cannabis. But the, the real issue that I had with this business model was 
the fact that they they focus so much on direct to consumer and that's pretty easily replaced just by the company um, that they're working with. So we, we look at the brands and we go to any of the brands that they work with. We can look up PAX, we'll go to PAX website and they have their own website and they, they would be able to do the exact same thing. So that's my real problem. I just don't really see a big need for them. Personally, I think at any point in the future, they could just be cut out um, from their suppliers and they'd be like, um, no, I think we're going to ship directly to our consumer. We have a lot of demand and we think we could make more money doing so. And I think that this would really, really hurt uh, G. I'll just call it Greenland because it's easier to say. Um, I think it would really, really hurt Greenland Holdings uh, just because they really do focus mainly on the brands that they don't own. Um, that isn't all entirely negative. Um, I would say if they are able to um, consistently earn money over time and keep a, a, a positive free cash flow, then they would be able to go out and acquire more companies over time and purchase them, which would um, limit the risk to other companies just cutting off their supply and saying, hey, why don't we just do this ourselves? This doesn't really make sense that we're we're shipping all these thousands of products to them and then letting them make um, just extra margin and extra profit off of our products because um, they don't really um, serve too much purpose for customers in the end. They're really typically just a middleman. Um, so that was my main um, flaw with this stock and why I personally wouldn't be invested in it or looking to invest in it in any time soon, just because, I mean, even if any other company wanted to do this, they could easily come in and offer just smaller margins and they might just have more cash on hand and be able to um, really just take them out of, out of the market and push them out. So I just think it would be not easy, but I, I don't think that it would be too difficult to phase this company out of the industry, um, which is why I wouldn't be comfortable buying in it. Uh, the last thing I did want to touch is the uh, user who did ask me to do a video on this stock mentioned a good um, short squeeze potential. Um, I just wanted to note that this stock has almost no short interest, um, mostly because, in my opinion, most people don't want to short this industry just because they understand that it's going to grow exponentially over time. And two, I mean, this is such a small company anyway, it, it doesn't really have um, that much downside for shorts to really go after it. I mean, it's already fallen tremendously. Um, it was up at $29. I think the shorts have basically already won um, for now. But yeah, I just didn't really see what they were talking about with the short squeeze potential because there's almost no interest in shorting this stock. And if there's no shorts, then it, it can't squeeze off of a short squeeze. Um, but that's all I wanted to say on Green Lane Holdings, ticker symbol GNLN. If you made it this far into the video, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate each and every viewer, um, but have a great day.